Next speaker is Dr. Kevin Chung. He's he's a, a associate professor of medicine at uh, Uniform Services Health Science in Bethesda. He is uh, came to our salvation earlier in our in our broadcast talking about hydrofluoric acid and decontamination. He runs the uh, the uh, burn intensive care unit uh, in San Antonio. And so, Dr. Chung, thank you so much for joining us today. We really look forward to your talk to us on critical care burns. Well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm delighted to be participating in this, uh, in this uh, conference. Uh, can you hear me okay? As yeah, great. Okay, excellent. So this is uh, my hospital, and uh, you can see that, um, you know, th this is located in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, within this hospital, San Antonio Mil Military Medical Center, is embedded the U.S. Army, Medical, uh, Army Burn Center, where I've been for the last 10 years. Uh, and so um, when I think about uh, priorities in burn care, we just heard Dr. Greenhall uh, and Dr. Sheridan talk about uh, burn wounds and uh, wound coverage. I think this is the most uh, uh, important part of burn care, obviously. Uh, the wounds are the most uh, important priority, and everything we do in the ICU has to support uh, optimum wound healing. And so one concept that I want to uh, sort of impress upon the audience is uh, this, this uh, concept of any time there's an insult, there's, there's an inflammatory response that results, whether it's from an organism or surgery, uh, and uh, SIRS stands for Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome and MODS, uh, multi-organ dysfunction. Uh, and this happens uh, a couple of times uh, with the major trauma. You have the insult uh, following, followed by the inflammation, and then there's this two-hit hypothesis where uh, second uh, complications such as a VAP will um, uh, create a more pronounced, uh, profound inflammatory response and uh, potentially result in uh, organ failure. And then you can support that patient uh, with organ support or the patient may die from that second insult. Um, uh, but this happens maybe a couple of times. In burns, what happens is this happens over and over again uh, just, by the, uh, uh, you know, uh, just by the injury itself. And then you have uh, multiple stage procedures, as Dr. Greenhall um, uh, explained, uh, if you don't have enough donor sites, uh, you have to stage the procedure, cover wounds that uh, cannot be covered by autograft uh, with cadaver skin or, autograft, or allograft, and then go back when the donor sites are healed and cover again. Each time a, a patient goes to the OR, this is in pediatrics, uh, uh, there's an inflammatory spike, uh, and this was well described in, in a prior study. And so uh, the concept that was drilled upon uh, into me by our former director, Steve Wolf, is this is a race against time to get the wounds closed, uh, all the wounds closed, at least the majority, until uh, before organ failure happens. And if it does happen, you want to support them uh, through this uh, to allow for optimum healing. And so in many ICU settings, uh, we talk about the silver bullet, and burns, uh, and, you know, in sick patients for that matter, uh, we talk about or think about the shield, the ICU shield concept. We're trying to, in burns, optimize the conditions for, uh, for wound healing, but at the same time protect the patient from all the different uh, complications that can occur. It starts with resuscitation morbidity, and Dr. Sheridan covered this uh, with uh, the uh, wide range of complications that can occur uh, as a result of over-resuscitation, uh, anywhere from orbital compartment syndrome to compartment syndrome to SCAR syndrome, abdominal compartment syndrome. Well, how much is too much? Uh, in adults, we use the IV index, which is 250 cc's per kg uh, in an individual, which uh, at that point, if that patient has received that much fluid in a 24-hour period, you're at risk for intra-abdominal hypertension and abdominal compartment syndrome. In order to avoid this, what we do to, uh, is uh, try to minimize crystalloid and use albumin as an adjunct. There have been reports of FFP being used in adults, and we do that uh, pretty routinely. In some instances, in some centers, vitamin C at high doses is infused in, to, in order to um, decrease inflammation and, and uh, provide an adjunct for resuscitated fluid uh, needs. And then uh, many centers have gone to plasma exchange. Uh, we use uh, um, high volume hemofiltration or uh, uh, hemofiltration as an adjunct during resuscitation to treat shock. So, uh, in terms of optimal resuscitation, obviously under resuscitating is bad. Over resuscitating, I believe personally, is worse. Uh, we prefer slightly under, so hypotensive, hypovolemic. Uh, relative hypovolemic resuscitation overall. So uh, in terms of shock, uh, there's quite a bit of, um, you know, when you're trying to optimize the uh, conditions for wound healing and the patient is in shock, 
there's quite a bit of uh, microcirculatory dysregulation that's occurring, and that impedes uh, healing um, theoretically. And so when you add to it vasopressors for a sustained period, obviously sometimes patients need this when they're in uh, fulminant shock, uh, as soon as they're able to, you're able to treat the infection, uh, reverse the source, or get source control, try to get them off the vasopressors as quickly as possible. Again, trying to promote the conditions for wound healing. For me, as I discussed very briefly, renal support uh, or CVVH, CRT, continuous renal uh, replacement therapy, is really multi-organ support for various reasons. Uh, one being uh, we, we use this modality, hemofiltration in general, uh, for the treatment of shock. Moving on to inhalation injury, the American Burn Association and uh, other international organizations have classified inhalation injury into three uh, distinct categories. Above the glottis, uh, usually seen in flash burns when you inhale uh, 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 flames. Uh, below the glottis, which is usually a chemical injury or reaction, and then poisoning. Um, lung support uh, is uh, applied in patients that are in respiratory failure, obviously. Uh, and the co uh, principles of lung support, I, I, it, the, it really doesn't matter which ventilator mode you're using, the principles are the same, and the principles is that of uh, lung protection. And so whatever ventilator mode you're using, uh, try to limit pressures, try to limit volumes uh, 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 while maintaining oxygenation and ventilation goals. We like to use a uh, ventilator called the volumetric diffusive respirator. It provides a high-frequency percussive ventilator mode uh, what this does is it, it um, provides intrapulmonary uh, uh, sort of uh, toilet, uh, 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 secretion toilets or removes secretions as it's uh, 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 providing gas exchange uh, with the central column of air, subtidal volumes going uh, down the airway and um, secretions hugging the airway coming back up. And so this is excellent in mobilizing secretions. Uh, in terms of uh, optimizing nutrition, uh, this is a, a huge component of uh, focus. Uh, uh, we pay a lot, a lot of attention to this in the ICU on a daily basis uh, to optimize wound healing. And what you have to recognize that, it, uh, that in burns, nitrogen excretion as a surrogate, when you use that as a surrogate for hypercatabolism, it's a tremendous uh, hypercatabolic process that's occurring and it's sustained over time and when you compare it to different populations, it's much more augmented than, than major trauma, for instance. And so uh, providing adequate nutrition is key. However, um, you, know, you want to avoid the temptation of overfeeding because that's bad too. What happens in burns, as uh, been well described many times by uh, Wolf and colleagues, is that the more calories you give uh, over what's needed, uh, you just deposit fat, not any more muscle. And so, uh, bottom line, poor nutrition is bad. Too much nutrition is bad. Just right is what you're shooting for. Uh, along uh, that line, uh, to address the hypercatabolic state, uh, we use propranol. This is a study in children. That's good for burns. Uh, not only does it control the hypercatabolic state, it uh, decreases lean muscle mass loss. Uh, moving on to infection, infectious complications are uh, something that uh, is inevitable in burn patients, especially the big burns, uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia, uh, wound infection, and uh, uh, bacteremia. Our strategy is to cover broadly initially when uh, the source is unknown and you know the patient's infected, and then very rapidly escalate uh, to one drug if possible uh, to target the antimicrobial in question. Fungal infections are a problem, uh, and uh, the key point here is that in burns, patients die with fungus uh, or uh, die because of fungus. In many other populations, it's just a bystander in burns. It, does, it can kill patients, and that's been uh, demonstrated in some studies. And so we got, uh, the point is to be very aggressive in monitoring for fungal infection and, um, and uh, treating it uh, uh, surgically and uh, taking care of it as soon as possible. And so uh, these are the empiric regimens that we use if we suspect mold. Uh, on a wound, which is most likely the case, will double cover sometimes with boriconyl all and ampho. So <laughs> overall, uh, you want to do all the uh, things that, that uh, apply to critical care uh, patients. Uh, you uh, want to do DVT prophylaxis. Uh, stress ulcer prophylaxis is, is key. Uh, that's applied in general to all ventilated patients, uh, elevating the head of the bed, uh, something that you want to pay attention to to decrease VAP. Physical therapy early. We're often trying to uh, walk patients, even on the ventilator, if they're uh, able to tolerate it. Uh, we'll uh, uh, do something called a bag and drag, drag them while on the ventilator. Sometimes the patients are aware enough to bag themselves. 
Um, we want to uh, eliminate wow. polypharmacy. That's something that uh, we want to pay attention to, uh, restrict transfusions, uh, and then uh, moderate glucose control. So uh, optimizing wound healing is, is a focus of ours in, in burns uh, in the ICU. And uh, all these things that I discussed uh, uh, are important to pay attention to. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Chung, that was outstanding. That was a, that was a cram course in critical care of the burn patient. Thank you so much. It's very, very useful.